that in sync with our tradition of the way of putting our blood into this process. I'm getting noise from someone. Your cough. Um, but again, I, you know, I look at a Kyrity recording as kind of icing on the cake. We are not here to, we're not a production crew, and we're not here to produce a video, right? Um, you know, we're here conducting a live class, uh, and, you know, we're trying to, as a sideline, capture some of that uh, video. So, uh, you know, it, it just helps to get a point across to walk over here, knowing that my equipment is going to pick it up in a while. And, you know, I can do that just so that the last 10 minutes or so. The audio is not picking up. Okay. Well, anyway, um... Microphone obey Newton's inverse square law. Um, you know, in other words, um, the level at which they pick up the sound, the sensitivity of it, varies with the square of the distance you are from the microphone. So if you're twice as far away, it's really uh, a fourth as sensitive, you know. Um, in, in other words, it, it decreases geometrically, so it, it makes a big difference, um, you know. And I, I, I've worked in radio for a number of years, and we work with the microphones very close to us. And um, in another life, I did a lot of uh, music, and we did a ton of sound through Kyrie Melody. So occasional little fiddler, but you're a, a musician, <laughs> the way you would ask it. All right, uh, so at any rate, um, so now th this is uh, not a view uh, a a we're getting to look at, but he says uh, Chris of Science, which I think they hold up. This is the approaches of uh, Christian science that um, evil is psychological illusion and unreal. Now, he, this gets tricky and troubling because, because he wants to uh, come down on treating evil as unreal. that is non-standard, that's not where everybody else would be uh, when they're talking about all this stuff. And we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. So he says, look, if we're going to uh, take Bible as authoritative, which we uh, as, as an evangelical will do, uh, the Bible treats evil events as real evil events and suffering as real suffering. So he says that solution doesn't work. Um, also, the Parker school was influenced by philosophy. Uh, I kind of went over it a little bit in a course on American philosophy in college, but Among the ways that they portray God uh, is as somewhat of a ninja, 
play less than uh, like how it should. So Trey should be doing his best to make sure that we're totally playing up to his best. Like I, I, I think he did the very very best as far as separating, but he did. And you know, we can't blame such a dude for allowing some evil to spread the word. Like uh, so the death universe, um, that, you know, whether you believe that God made the universe in seven or 24 hour shifts, which is a problem because the planets aren't even created till about the third or fourth day, is they were how, and, and also the Hebrew word is just as easily meaning eons of time, um, but the, the point is, um, if you look at the world as created ex which is the traditional Judeo-Christian view, it's very different from seeing the world as um, co-equal with eternal matter. Now, Plato had a kind of a um, impersonal, very distant God. I mean, besides anything he held from the traditional called a demiurge, whose job it was to put eternal form and matter together to form, you know, the material world. Um, but, but for Plato, um, the material world, along with the forms, was eternal. And so the demiurge didn't Plato's Demiurge didn't create the world ex nihilo, ex ante. Plato's Demiurge just was kind of worked to put already existing form together with already existing matter. Um, you know, and, and uh, apparently the view of the personal school wasn't very far from Plato's type of view. Um, so in other words, if evil is there then God, all he can do is do the best. Um, and it's not too far from viewing, and I have the yin-yang thing, even though he doesn't. The, the, I think to me it's more interesting to have the yin-yang thing. Um, you know, um, evil and, and good are seen as two sides of the same coin. The yin and the yang. Any theory of being evil is a such views rejected were rejected by Plato and his school. Uh, the material world was not in fact the evil that was being created by God. You know, uh, again, so Augustine incorporates some Platonism in this view, but unlike the first century heretical views of Aesthetic and docetic Gnosticism that um, incorporated Platonic views, including the view that the material world was evil. In other words, what what keeps things from being perfect in this world is that you have a perfect form for Plato embodied in the evil matter. In other words, for Plato. Um, to be less than good is to be less than real. And so, so the material world, it, um, you know, is much farther away from the form of the good. 
get a mental hand around Plato, you would have to get away from thinking of existence as an all or nothing thing and think of it as a manifest degree. Demiurge, as I said, is not all powerful. His demiurge is not the creator of the material world, but merely takes an already existing impermanent matter and puts it together with his own form. Uh, plus, Plato's demiurge is not the foundation for moral judgment, um, which is one of the kind of So, you know, it, it, it's, you, you don't want to kind of make Plato into a monster. the traditional gods and, and rendered them more monstrous. Yeah, I guess in the other philosophy that I was thinking of was the Stoicism. Mm -hmm. Which is set up as this um, like everybody can kind of relate to the monster <coughs> that eats them. Right? Yeah. Yeah and and you know the there's a question as to just how much they they do. Yeah. You know. Um, so so at any rate, um, so like the Taoist translation of Plato, you know, is it, it's one that's out there on the internet because it's in the public domain and since it was translated in the late 1800s, right? And, and the he will often, like in the context of Socrates, um, and, and, and he, he does that even in the video. In the context of Socrates mentioning his treatise um, in the Apology, um, he says, my, my brother is very tired. <laughs> and Taoists will put God with a capital G. And if you really look at it, uh, Socrates hardly is giving directions for his life. In what his friend did, uh, and what was revealed as some Oracle, by the Oracle of Delphi, but the Oracle of Delphi was supposed to speak in this prophecy and pronouncement for Apollo, not for God with a capital G, you know. Uh, and so, so you got to kind of take, you know, the beginning of Paul, even some translation of the piece of, piece of a monotheism from one way Socrates and the other from the other, and that sort of thing. Plus, the whole point of of the dialogue. So I, I, you know, I, I just say it, it, you need to kind of 
not be a more monotheistic view of the need to pray every five to six minutes and to get to heaven. Well, well, I mean, to say that I had a dead word, you know, which is not the form of a good, but the foundation for moral goodness is not the perfect pattern of God who is morally perfect as revealed to others in the tradition of monotheism by the the impersonal form of the good. Now, Aristotle had one God, um, but it was the distant prime mover, and I think the book says he mostly contemplates his own perfection, and is not like the personal God of monotheism is really involved in the day-to-day lives of ordinary people in the same way that God is portrayed in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, no, but that part of the praying, um, I mean, the thing that God is infinite goes both ways. To claim that God is infinite, um, yes, it means that God is the big, is everywhere. It isn't that God gets around a certain universe, but that the universe is one point in God and separate from God. But also, to say that God is infinite is to say that God is infinitely small, and as well as being can be um, infinite in the sense of knowing the knowing that God is not infinite, not being compared to God, comparing God to Aristotle. Um, Okay, well, (laughs) the point is, uh, all this can be realized is that he studied the religion of portray the world as good. So, what Augustine basically says is God created the world as good. Um, and he actually, the whole point, the whole point of Augustine's solution to the problem of evil, which is why I don't like Christian creating evil because I think um, Augustine's approach sees evil as non-existent and the way we define evil is as the lack of a good not as a positive existing thing in other words if evil does not exist, the question about whether a good God created evil doesn't even arise. Because evil isn't a thing to be created or to exist. And that's why I think when Hicks said uh, Augustine um, is not making evil to be totally unreal but just less real, uh, you know, I that raises some questions. Th- here's the way I have to see it, okay? It's kind of a blue on black matter. Uh, you've got the form, you've got goodness itself for play. In other words, the form of the good. That's what's represented by the sun outside of the cave, right? That, and not the will of the gods, is the foundation for moral goodness or praying, right? Um, And the form of the good has two characteristics. It's, you know... um, morally perfect 
or it's the standard for moral goodness. Um, so it's fully good, just just like just like the form of the beautiful is fully beautiful in every way. Yeah, yeah. Here, okay, here was how Augustine tried to reckon with our action. Um, it's just sort of, I, I mean, it's a legitimate question, right? Okay. Um, basically, Augustine takes Plato's form out of some um, immaterial other realm. and puts them in the mind of God. God with a capital G, the God of my opinion, the God of the Bible and church tradition, not Plato's demigod. Now, some people think that's an okay move, right? Uh, uh, okay, so instead of having the form of the good out there somewhere in the standard for moral goodness, it's now the form of the good along with all other perfect standards for in the mind of God with a capital G. Um, you know, so so that but the problem with having the standard for moral goodness um, residing in the form of the good in, in standards in another realm is that basically um, it seems to many people, at least to some extent, which is saying that God is omnipresent and all-powerful, because you're saying, no, the standard for moral goodness is not in God. It's in this other existing thing. So Augustine tries to get rid of that problem by putting form of goodness along with the other things somehow in the mind of God. But part of the problem there is you still you still get an eternal standard that exists independently of what God is doing. And so does that does even In other words, there are some people who think that even putting Plato forms in the mind of God does not get rid of the problem of the clash of eternal standards already existing independently of the will of God. That is, you could claim that God is omnipotent and all powerful. You know. So I think. And I'm one of those people, you know. Now, there are some technical articles. The absolute best article for them in, in some articles in mine by a Dutch philosopher um, where he, he basically argues that, uh, that Augustine, uh, you know, that there's still a clash, still an incompatibility. Right, it's independent, it's and, and those standards exist. It, right, it exists independently of God's will. They're yeah, eternal, they're you know, yeah. In, in other words, having other eternal perfect entities, even if you throw them 
into the basket of God's mind still <coughs> got eternal standards that are independent of God's will. And what does that do with the claim in monotheism, or essential claim to monotheism, that God is all-powerful or omnipotent? You know? Um, I apologize, but we're, we're getting kind of off on this tangent, but, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, so, so anyway, um, oh, oh, well, let me go back to what I was saying, right? Um, so the form of the good for Plato, right, is the standard for moral perfection. It is the goodest thing out there. But you barely get one in there. <laughs> you gotta hold the good of the goodest thing out there. You know, uh, obviously that does uh, damage to the English language. But but you know, it's 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 it is perfectly good and everything else tries to be as good as the form of the good but to some degree falls short of it. Even the other forms aren't perfectly good like the form of the good, you know. So. The, but, but all the forms are better than anything in the material. Um, but so if you have like a continuum and to be less than good, that is to fall short of the form of the God, is to be less than real, then think about where evil is on this spectrum, right? If we have evil, which is as far from the form of the good as you can get, well, why wouldn't evil then be unreal if it's as far from reality as you can get? by being as far from the form of the good as you can get, why wouldn't it be unreal? You know, um, so he says, if evil is not unreal, it is incomplete as real. But I, I think Augustine makes much more sense um, if you interpret him as this notion of Because then uh, you get God off the hook for creating evil. Um, because, right, if it's unreal, then nobody created it because it doesn't even exist, right? Uh, so, so, so the question, uh, as, as I, I don't want to repeat myself, of, of how can a good God create evil doesn't even arise if evil isn't a thing that can be created, right? Okay, so uh, so then uh, the best way to understand what he's saying is as follows. I mean, we the phrase that's usually used for Augustine's view is evil is the lack or the deprivation of the good. In other words, it's not a co coexisting thing with God, um, which is what Manichaeanism taught and why um, Augustine thought he's got to abandon that view. Manichaeanism, which, and you'd think they would have apparently taught that evil is the coordinate opposite of good. best way to look at this is, is let's bring Plato into the picture to help bail us out here and, and look at evil as just the lack of a good. So a lot of people like take Chomsky's standard to illustrate this view. Um, I mean, they're kind of really fast about how to explain it. And, and if you're in an agrarian and haven't had much rain in a few years, you could 
Jacob of the Plow as the Jesus kid, right? Um, but Augustine would say, well, no, it's not an evil in the sense that it's a positive evil, but if rain is a good in an agrarian economy, a drought is merely the lack of that good. Now, I don't know how you look at a flood this way. I guess, you know, a flood is, if, if, dry, if dry land is good, a flood is the lack of dry land. Now, I, I'm not sure. But, so you would say, well, drought is simply the lack of a good. Uh, now, now, they had, I, I was looking at this news, I, I had to put this in my computer because I can't find it here. I, I think I will tuning in to it this week for uh, maybe I'll apply it to the Washington Post or whatever it is. Where's the tool that I can plug in? <laughs> yeah, well, Fallon and then um, um, the guy at Digital Flip. on there about a guy who knows that he has a physical condition and he's losing his sight and he's going to go completely blind. But he was trying to take in as much of the sight to the world as the world can before that happens. And so they showed him looking over him and saying, well, I have limited vision, but you still see which is impressive. The only side from that fly map is the uh, line in the middle of the Boston area. Impressive from five miles from the ground. I really like the depiction of the Boston area. I just have to say that. Yeah, the bay is quite the color. Anyway, so, so somebody might say it's a wrong Somebody has come down with cancer or ALS, you know, uh, and um, then they say, God, it's a terrible evil, you know, I'm fighting cancer or, or uh, you know, I'm going to get ALS. And from, you know, from Augustine's description, it's going to be worse. Was that bright enough for you? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Somebody asked that. Yeah, it's like, wait a minute. No. Uh, you know, or I guess the su mental yeah. suffering would be the lack of the good, which would be the peace and the calm. Um, so God alone is fully real for Augustine. Evil doesn't fully exist. But again, Pitt has this slant where he doesn't want to, see his problem is he criticizes uh, earlier the, um, the Christian scientists in this article for making evil into a psychological illusion and now they do the same thing.
Basically, a spin doctor is somebody um, who makes himself or herself available to the media to put the right spin on a news story, um, you know, so that the media gets the slant on that story that their particular party and, 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 and both of major parties. that crisis created by putting a positive spin on it. Uh, and, and, and we also have the word euphemism, which is what? A way of describing something so that what seems very bad doesn't seem as bad. You know, there's usually two things in there. what a spin doctor is doing. In, in other um, the, the text that I used to use on, I think I've got it in the slide. Um, yeah. Um, one text used to say, uh, Augustine's solution whitewashes evil by defining it away with something akin to political spin and double talk. Uh, call them evils or absences of good, depression or dread, or whatever. Um, um, so, so at any rate, um, one thing that's an interesting characteristic of Augustine's approach is it's kind of an across-the-board approach. Um, you know, it, it sort of comprehends the solution to the problem in terms of what we're doing. But the question is, uh, you know, does calling evils absences of good really do it? You know, I mean, several of you all already said that you know this whole comfort uh, thing uh, to say, well, you know, what's come upon you is the lack of good, not of evil. spent a lot of time on the problem of evil. One of the things, um, you know, there are two types of evil that it concerns, and Augustine's solution um, can, can deal most with things like natural evils, right? A drought is really the lack of a good storm. Um, so you have natural and metaphysical consequences, right, a volcano or you know, the decay of an earth or
somebody who says to me, you crack me, well, it's not holding me responsible for being evil. If, if free will is a gift from God, which, you know, it seems people say is that, and the only way I can do evil is to use God's gift of free will, then why is God telling me to do evil? I couldn't do evil unless he gave me Now that may not seem a problem to you, but but to all this seems like a real problem to me. You know, it's like, um, in other words, if 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 God can judge the world and, and rightly punish evil, um, well, are we saying God can't really do evil because any of the evil that occurs as a result of human free choice only.
too, right? And it's just like the way that you experience it. Like the audience is alive, they want to see the shows and now as they have no free choice and free will. Uh, and, and the students forgot that there's something meaningful about that that wouldn't be meaningful if you made a really public but always real life film. You can't do that and not the ability to see it and do other things. But anyway, to get back to this get the free will thing for Augustine, um, the way he gets that off the hook here is uh, to take God's perspective and say, look, I didn't give you that free will for you to choose to do either of those things. I, I gave and give the free will to you so that you choose to do evil. I, I mean, choose to do good with it, the kinds of things I, God, would approve of. Now, if you use that free will to choose to do evil, then the evil is on your hands and not mine because you're using that gift of free will against my own intentions and will. That's, I, I'm severely paraphrasing Augustine, but that's basically his position here. In, in other words, um, the idea is that there's no free will and you're only exercising it to choose to do evil, but it was not God's intention to give you free will to do such things. Good. So if we do use it to do evil, then the evil is our fault, not God's, is essentially what Augustine says. So the free will defense can deal with some types of evil, right? Uh, the, the kinds of evil that come to God as a result of human choices. Um, but it also, to a certain extent, some natural evil. You say uh, the free will defense doesn't doesn't deal with natural evil in the most basic sense of the word. It's just a thing of a hurricane or an earthquake. However, uh, um, what if you use our free will to choose to build condominiums in Florida during a period where hurricanes are less numerous and then you get a period like the 60s where they come back with a vengeance you know uh, the, in 1992 there were a lot of floods on the Mississippi River right and so um, if those existed then some of the people who were flooded out were now That is in an area that is kind of flooding every, I know, 10 or 20 years or so. Should you be compensating them for doing that? Um, but notice, I mean, if you choose to rebuild your home in a flood zone, and then 10 or 15 years later you get flooded out again, wouldn't it be a little disingenuous to, uh, you know, build the Florida condominium in a place where hurricanes rarely occur. So in other words, you can get rid of some natural evil, death penalty, and you know, saying some of these come about as a result of our bad free will and where we want to build them. I mean, the people in Fukushima were told, don't build the doggone reactor there because of problems with earthquakes. Is that what it is? <laughs> what happened? Right? Uh, so anyway, um, 
that so you can, you know, well, okay, so moral versus, so hip observes moral evils are evils that come about as a result of human wickedness. Non-moral or sometimes called metaphysical evil uh, is an evil as a result of nature. Um, and he talks about the free will defense. But here he goes into a question that Assuming that God took two and one three worlds, where you say there can be free will, which is the whole abstract thing, the metaphysical construct, it might not be actually attainable in terms of human thinking, because you're asking, could God force us to use our free will to do good? Mm -hmm. Well, if he's forcing us to do good, then by definition, we don't have free will. So his question is, making it that simple. Well, that's why I wanted to ask that question. Yeah. Well, and this is kind of the tack that Matthew takes that um, uh, uh, now, now you're saying see I, I believe as, as you believe that it, it should be logically possible for this to happen Matthew try, uh, I, I'm sorry Hick against Matthew and, and this is a, a technical point in my book that I'm not going to get into but just a he tries to argue that um, asking God to build build a world where people have genuine free will but never choose evil is like asking God to uh, make a rock that uh, kills all those people who step on it. You know, that, that it's asking God to do the logically impossible. Like, like asking God to destroy a star system. Um, and, and theologians, in other words, the reason I see a lot of this as a cold thing is it's not a shortcoming in God's omnipotence that God cannot do the logically impossible. Um, you know, and, and, and so the question is would it be logically impossible, um, would it go against the definition of free will to say that God could make a world where everyone has genuine free will but never as just as a matter of fact have the ability to do evil you know now Matthew argues that that's logically that's asking God to do the logically impossible I think it's logically possible but just highly unlikely yeah, it's not that you know or, or sometimes it's it's not ever that evil is a really good evil or that it's that it's Oh, okay. So, so, so you kind of like the other way of looking at it that 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 evil needs a coordinate opposite, or that that if you don't have evil clearly delineated, you don't know what good is. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Well, that's not what you're saying. Well, that's what I'm that this might come up, but we, in the story, we have Hick come up with this evil that has no connection to free will. Okay, well, well look, um, so I, I know some of you may, you know, not be totally into the world, but it's, it's one of the problems of philosophy <laughs> for self get over this one. Remember, <laughs> philosophy <laughs> touches <laughs> other <laughs> disciplines. Um, the problem of evil is almost a, a logical Logically impossible for evil to exist in a world where God has the 
Find it on 